Welcome to this Windows channel and this is the look and review, quick review of the latest build of Windows 10, which is the build 17083 and it was released today at 1 p.m. Eastern. So a uh, new build, uh, first real new build with new features in the past two weeks and it has uh, quite a few improvements. The install seemed to have gone flawlessly. I wasn't looking at the screen or anything, but seems to have taken the usual about three hour, I would say, of install. And uh, this is kind of, you know, what we expect on this older machine. Um, seems pretty stable. I've been using it for the past few hours and it uh, didn't crash, no green screens or anything. What's new in the uh, build? Well, the first thing that you'll notice is in the settings. Go into the settings and once you are in the settings, go into personalization and in there you will see fonts. This is new. You now have the possibility to look at and choose the different fonts. You have the possibility to also, if you let's, for example, take uh, this one here. Now this one's called condensed. And if you click here, you can actually move around the size of the font and choose uh, what size it will be as default. You also have all the metadata, where it comes from and where it's located in the Windows um, system. So um, nice to have fonts here. Another little thing that was in the control panel and moved into the um, settings and it's under the uh, personalization tab, which is uh, not bad of an idea. Uh, what else do we have apart from funds? Well, we have some interesting information. <coughs> Sorry. I had um, basically uh, told you that there was a new feature that was not enabled yet in the privacy settings. If you go to diagnostics and feedback, you will see that now in the tailored experiences, there's the diagnostics data viewer. It is now something available that you can actually use. Now, the first time you turn it on because it's off by default, when you click Diagnostics Data Viewer, it's going to bring you to the Microsoft Store to download the Diagnostics Data Viewer. So that's very important because you, you need that app to view all the data. Once it's installed, you click there and you will see that there is uh, all the different sections with all the data and all the information that you can get from uh, that data. So everything that's registered and it's not, you know, it's not made in a uh, super easy way to understand it, but it's there and um, you have the data that you can go through and see what exactly it's going to send as information. You can also, of course, um, you know, have it have a search through it of certain things. You can, of course, change the way that everything's going to be shown. So uh, you can filter it out here on the left side. You see all the filters that you can actually uh, check out. So um, basically, kind of neat. Uh, I think it's to please the European Union that, um, you know, started saying that they need to have more information about what diagnostics and what information is being sent out with um, Windows 10, of course. And I think it's a good thing that we could see the data that's being sent. Why not? You know, it's... It, it, it's what we're doing on our computers. So there's nothing really secret there. It's just, you know, can we see what we're sending? I think it's okay. Delete diagnostics data here. And uh, basically uh, it's not functional, but uh, it seems that we'll be able at some point to delete some of that data uh, for sure. So that's going to be interesting to uh, check out what's coming up. Timeline improvements, interesting improvements in timeline. And I think it's a great idea. So when you have timeline shows up the usual. And if you go through the timeline feature, well, you can actually right click a uh, tile. And one of the options that's now available is clear all from yesterday, for example, because I am at yesterday now. Or if I go down further, uh, here we are January 19, right click, clear all from January, January 19. So, if you are using your computer one day, you don't want anything that you did that day to show up in timeline, you can actually now choose to remove a specific date or, uh, you know, 
from earlier today, for example. Now, if you click on all the activities you do, the next thing that's very nice is that you can actually look at this and right click at a specific time. And look at that. Now I'm at 1 p.m. here in the timeline. It says, oh, you want to clear all that you did at 1 p.m. So if you want to clear a specific thing of what you did um, you know, at a specific time, you can also do it, which is kind of a very, very nice feature and um, a welcome change to the timeline feature. Because frankly, if you had to choose and to, you know, s say you used your computer for two hours and your timeline feature, you had 30 items. Well, you had to delete them one by one, which was kind of tedious. Now you can choose a whole chunk of time and okay, I don't want, I don't want that, you know? So this is pretty cool. The quiet hours has a new name. So if you go into system and look on the left side, you now have something called focus assist. So this has what is quiet hours. Um, focus assist, I don't know why the change exactly, but anyways, um, it seems that they're going to call it like that mostly because there's going to be a lot of expanding stuff. And of course, if you customize your priority list, you'll be able to also, um, you know, set, of course, the different focuses on what you want to use basically from the taskbar. So focus assist is the new name of quiet hours. Um, you got to know, you know, uh, that's kind of something that's a little, um, maybe difficult sometimes when you're used to using a, a specific feature and in a new version of Windows, it changes name. I don't know. I'm not sure about that one, but anyways, we'll see. Uh, if you use Windows LO, the setup is much easier than it was. So you'll have less problems with that. If you look now at uh, Universal Windows Platform apps and you right click on them, one of the things that will show up now is the version numbers will be available uh, if you look at all the information. So and that was something that um, a lot of uh, people wanted to know, you know, um, what are, what version number am I on a specific app? Um, there, there's a lot of people wanted to know, you know, I, I want an easy way from the, the uh, start screen or just the tile to know that. Uh, new option for start uh, the um, sorting of your startup apps. So if you go into uh, system and uh, settings, sorry, and uh, you go to apps. Now you will have, of course, we had the startup tab, which was telling us what app is starting up and everything. Now you can sort by status, by startup impact. Um, so it's a different way of uh, starting things. So that's nice, you know, for example, startup impact might be very nice because it gives you the uh, importance of what is really taking a lot of impact on the startup in your machine. Um, probably that would be the setting that I would like to see the most because I want to see what has a high impact to try to maybe make my system faster when it boots up. Uh, there's some Hyper-V improvements if you use a virtualization process uh, for that. Uh, ease of access improvements. So there's new settings to turn automatically uh, hiding scroll bars, are, b scroll bars uh, on and off. So uh, these are under, of course, settings. And uh, the ease of access um, tools. And so um, basically in display, there will be some options for, um, you know, turning on or off animations, but also if you have different options you will also have scroll bars that you can actually choose not to hide when they're auto hiding and stuff like that. Um, you also can choose whether to enable or disable the color filter keys if you wish to do so in the color filter section. So there's a, a whole new set of settings for the ease of access that could be interesting. Um, they've added narrator landmarks throughout settings. So when there's, uh, you're using the narrator, makes it easier to kind of follow through what's happening. Um, there's, you know, uh, eye contrast black. There's uh, ease of access navigation lists now. You can um, also have uh, narrator uh, cursor subsection 
that has been removed in here because there were some sections there that kind of didn't they didn't want to you know really have basically so they've kind of removed some of the things in there they've changed app permissions so now when an app is launched for the first time they will actually give you um, or ask you what access do you want to control so you'll be able to control um, you know do you want to give access to your pictures videos or documents folder or not there will be a constant dialog box that will pop up prompting to accept or deny the requests so there's a few little things uh, that will be in there and uh, you can go to um, also I believe um, privacy if you look at the settings and privacy um, there's a uh, it says three new settings page, once for each of the folders if you deny access to a particular folder. So in here you'll have uh, a lot of, yeah, here they are. Videos, pictures, and documents are, are here. And um, so you have access, allow access to video libraries for this. And you can choose the apps that will have access to this. So all sorts of new little improvements in here. If you want to have really detailed look at these options, of course, because we'll play and tweak with them, look at the videos we're going to post in the next few days in the Insider channel and you'll see all of these features in the real world activity, what they do and how they work. Finally, sets is gone. Um, it was kind of a little ugly. A lot of you didn't like it and uh, they decided let's remove sets. It's something we don't want. Um, and that's fine. I think it's okay, and it wasn't. It was far from being ready to to anyways to to be used basically. So uh, that should be okay. And uh, basically, you will have the uh, sets feature appear only in Reststone Five, uh, which is going to be in the uh, fall of 2018. So that's pretty much what I have to say. It's very stable built, worked well, and had no crashes, no glitches at all. Everything seems to be smooth. There's a lot of problems in this build that are known, so be aware. And, um, well, if you've installed it, why not give me your opinion and what you think? Um, kind of nice. Nice to see that there are new features being added. And, you know, we're moving really fast towards uh, Redstone 4. Um, you know, we're supposed to have this in March. It's only a little more than a month away. It's a month, you know, maybe if, if we just say like, you know, end of March, it's, it's barely two months. So uh, go, times are really going fast here. And uh, I don't expect, you know, as we get new builds in the next few weeks, I think we're going to have less and less new features and more and more bug fixing. And also that's why on February the 6th, don't forget that there's the bug bash that is going to start. So you can do the quests and try to help the Windows Insider team uh, have a better experience and help everybody get a, goo, a cool working Windows, uh, basically. If you enjoy my videos, please subscribe, give us thumbs up. Thank you for watching.